In the last part of this lecture, we want to look at stochastic gradient descent methods that use second moments of the gradient. So previously we have introduced stochastic gradient with momentum because the momentum term allows us to have some memory of the previous steps we made and therefore accumulate information in which directions we want to make longer steps and in which direction we want to make shorter steps and we have thought about this as some sort of poor man's version of the Newton's method where we actually compute the, the second derivatives and use the Hessian matrix of second derivatives in order to compute an optimal choice for step lengths in different dimensions but that was too expensive so we couldn't use the Newton's method directly. Now second moment methods of stochastic gradient descent are improved stochastic gradient descent methods that do not only compute running averages of the gradient but also running averages of the second moment of the gradient. So we, we are still not computing the Hessian or inverting the Hessian but the idea is that by tracking this higher moment of the statistics over the individual updates that we are doing we can in incorporate more useful information and therefore make better choices of the step lengths in different dimensions. So this is the idea of second moment methods and this then leads us to really state-of-the-art optimization algorithms that are used a lot like ADAM, RMSProp and others. Let us start with the RMSProp algorithm. So uh, firstly we define the second moments, so uh, the gradient of the loss function with respect to the parameters at time or iteration t is again called gt, yeah, that's a vector, and we define the second moment as the expectation value of the gradient squared. So here the square is applied to every individual element of this vector, so the output s is again a vector. The RMS prop update rule is defined as follows. So first we compute the gradient as, as usual. So the, just the, the first derivatives of the loss function with respect to the parameters. And then we update our expectation value or our running average of the second moment as follows. We are mixing our last uh, uh, vector of the second moment as t minus 1 with the current expectation or uh, with, the, with the current value from the current time step t by just computing the gradient g and squaring it and we're mixing these two estimates according to the coefficient beta which is between 0 and 1. If we set beta equal to 0 we have no memory we are just using the current squared gradient as s and if we are setting it to 1 then we are not updating but we are just using our past estimate. So we, we are setting it somewhere between 0 and 1 and usually relatively close to 1. Now the update equation looks as follows. We are updating the parameters by taking the last parameters and then going against the direction of the gradient but we modify the direction of the gradient using the second moment estimate s and again here the division and the uh, square root are defined element-wise. So we basically just do this for every single element of G and S. Okay, so the coefficient beta controls the averaging time of the second moment. Often we, we use something like 0 0.9, so the closer beta is to 1, the longer our memory is. Eta is again the learning rate, that's a small number. Epsilon is just a regularization constant. Uh, it avoids that we divide by zero in the, in the parameter update equation. And the learning rate is reduced or increased in directions when the gradient fluctuates much or little. So the effect of this update, of this RMS prop update, is that if the gradient uh, fluctuates a lot, we are reducing the learning rate in that direction uh, because it's a sign for making steps that are too large whereas the gradient fluctuates not much over subsequent updates that is a sign that we can make larger steps and make more progress in the corresponding directions and then uh, we update that accordingly. So this 
speeds up conversions by making larger learning rates or using larger learning rates in flat directions. So again, this is useful for anisotropic minima or very like lengthy canyons in uh, which we need to make long steps in certain directions in order to get close to the optimum. Now, Adam is a very famous and widely used optimizer and that is essentially a combination of the RMS prop update and the stochastic gradient descent with momentum update we have seen before. So now we are doing running averages of the first and second moment of the gradient. So a running average of the mean, or some, just a running average of the gradient itself, which is a running mean and a running average of the second moment. And um, based on this, we define the gradient and the moment update as follows. So first of all, we compute the current gradient G. Then we have a running average of uh, the gradient itself and its second moment. And we call these estimates M and S. Then there is an additional bias correction for these moments, essentially just a correction for the running average. And then we define the parameter update as given here. So this is relatively similar to the uh, previous algorithm. You see that the parameter update essentially looks the same. You update the parameters by taking the last parameters and then making a step against the current gradient estimate. You correct this gradient estimate by the estimate of the second moment. And the difference to RMS prop is that instead of uh, the just the current computation of the gradient G, you're really using the running average of the gradient M. Again, division, taking square roots and squaring are all element-wise operations. So this update equation really is implemented for every single element of the corresponding vector. The parameters have a similar meaning as in RMS prop. So we have now two memory or time scales, beta one and beta two. They set the memory lifetime of the first and second moment averages and the closer they are to one, the longer the memory. Um, eta again is the learning rate and epsilon again is a regularization constant just the same as an RMS prop. And again, this method increases the learning rate when uh, the function is shallow and when we're making consistent updates and it reduces it when we are fluctuating a lot and when the norm of the gradient is large. And this helps us to speed up learning in the face of long shallow minima. So in order to better understand what Adam does, let us just consider the case of a single dimensional optimization. So we have a single parameter theta that we are over which we are optimizing. And let us rewrite the second moment in terms of the variance. So uh, S minus M square, the mean square. And then uh, the update rule is given as follows. So uh, we have the new parameter given as the old parameter minus learning rate times this fraction that you see here. And now we can look at different limiting cases of this update rule. So one interesting limit is when our gradient estimates are consistent. So in subsequent steps, we have similar estimates of the gradient. And that means our variance sigma squared is small. So that means the running mean of the gradient m hat is dominating the sum in the denominator on the right hand side and the ratio or the fraction is approximately one because we have m hat divided by square root of m hat square. So our update rule is simply subtract either. So this will cut off large persistent gradients at the norm of one and it will just limit the maximum step size in steep directions where we have consistent gradients. The other extreme is if we have very strong fluctuations between subsequent gradient descent steps, then the variance dominates the sum in the square root on the right hand side and we can neglect the running mean in the sum 
and then we make updates that are equal to eta, so the step size, multiplied with running mean divided by um, the standard deviation or the square root of the, of the running variance. And mean divided by standard deviation, this is basically a signal to noise ratio. So this tells us for every direction how much consistent signal is there compared to the fluctuations or the noise in subsequent estimates of that signal. So this basically says make the steps along each direction just as large as we have useful signal information from uh, the estimates of the gradient in that direction. So finally let us look at an illustration of these different optimization algorithms on a tricky function. So this is the so-called Beals function, it's a periodic function, so the function is periodic in x and y shown here and we are looking at the trajectories of different optimizers starting from two different points on uh, uh, the top and the bottom of the plot so basically at minus 1 plus 4 and at minus 2 minus 4 and you can see that in order to find the local optimum which is marked by a star here in the right um, around plus 1 0 in the picture we need to find this canyon, this shallow blue canyon, and then move along this canyon. So this is one of these cases where we have a very unisotropic long minimum, where there's one shallow direction in which it is difficult to make progress if we use something like straightforward gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent. And we also have transition states here, so our in the transition states we have sh saddle points here, so there are regions where the Gradient is locally zero, but we're not at the optimum yet. And you can see that both Adam and RMS prop are doing a good job and eventually find the optimum, while various other optimization methods, such as gradient descent, gets stuck in, uh, in local shallow regions. All right, so with this, we are finished for today's lecture on optimization of neural networks. Adam, RMS prop, or stochastic gradient descent with momentum are frequently used optimizers. They are used to obtain state-of-the-art results. And of course, there are many, many other versions of optimizers, and there's still quite a lot of research in this direction. But in many cases, you can pick one of these methods and use them.